Coming up, the Bruins fall to the Panthers and Dallas evens up their series with Minnesota. This is Locked On Game to Game, NHL. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Game to Game NHL. Local experts join us to go over all of the playoff action from last night in the NHL. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. The Bruins do not play a lot of bad hockey, but they definitely did on Wednesday night. Florida took advantage of some sloppy play by Boston, and they have evened up the series now. So Locked On hosts from both teams are in to recap Game 2. The Florida Panthers go into TD Garden and pick up a huge win on the road to tie the series at one. What is up, guys? This is Armando Velez from the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And the Florida Panthers defeat the Boston Bruins by final score of 6-3 in Game 2. The Florida Panthers were one of two teams to defeat the Bruins this season, twice in the regular season. And the Florida Panthers were the team that averaged the most goals against the Boston Bruins. And man, did that carry over in the first two games of the series, especially in, in game two. And with the return of Sam Bennett, he was very noticeable. That second line was buzzing with him, Matthew Kachuk, and Etulus Lusterain. And Sam Bennett, eight shots on goal. Nobody had more than four shots on, on goal for the Panthers on the, on the evening. And, Brandon Montour was fantastic as well, getting two goals on the night. And the Florida Panthers, this is what they did. They took the eyes away of Linus Allmark, something they failed to do in game one, and they were more willing to go up the gut. And also the Boston Bruins, a lot of giveaways in their own zone as well that helped the Panthers get to the, the their multiple leads, which they never trailed on the night. And the Florida Panthers, outside of the garbage time goal by Taylor Hall, both of the goals that they gave up were on special teams. One of them, of course, shorthanded, but that it's something that can be fixed. But the five-on-five five play for the Panthers, incredible once again in, in game two. So listen to my recap of this 6-3 to three win for the Florida Panthers over the Boston Bruins. Make sure to listen to my next episode of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your team, every day. The Boston Bruins sure picked a bad night to play one of their worst games of the season, losing 6-3 to the Florida Panthers in Game 2. This is Ian McLaren of Locked On Boston Bruins, and this game was actually tied heading into the third period, where the Bruins are characteristically pretty strong, but they allowed a goal early. Things spiraled from there, and the eventual score after a few more goals from the Panthers and some hijinks to end the game was 6-3. to three. Now, the Bruins turned the puck over a ridiculous amount of times, 15 at least, according to ESPN. Very sloppy, and hopefully a healthy Patrice Bergeron can get back in there for Game 3 and help the Bruins win one at least on the road here with this series now tied up at 1 after two games. The Islanders have put themselves in an 0-2 hole after losing a heartbreaker in overtime to Carolina. Locked on Islanders is in with everything that you need to know. The New York Islanders fall 4-3 in overtime. They trail the series two games to none. Gil Martin of Locked on Islanders here. Frustrating loss for the Islanders. They came back from a 2-0 deficit, took a 3-2 lead, but could not hold it. They were wearing down the Hurricanes physically and doing a good job of of playing Islanders hockey when the game was tied. A couple of factors really figuring into this loss. One of them, Ilya Sorokin, did not have his A game, at least two of the four goals. He didn't take good angles on, and he was just not on top of his game. And the second thing is Carolina had six power plays in this game. The Islanders had none, and there was a blatant missed high stick to the face of Scott Mayfield on the play when the game-winning goal was scored. Can't make excuses, still got to win the game. But the Islanders, even if they would have had one or two power plays, could have made a difference in this game. For more, listen to and watch the Locked On Islanders podcast wherever you get your podcasts. The goaltender choice for Minnesota proved costly as Dallas cashed in with a 7-3 win. Locked On Wild and Locked On Stars go over game two as Dallas evens up this series. Marc-Andre Fleury got the start in game number two and... It did not go well. Hey, everybody. Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, recapping a 7-3 to loss for the Minnesota Wild in Game 2 of their series against the Dallas Stars. 
This one went lopsided early on as the Wild played well to start, but then after a penalty, the Stars scored almost immediately, and it just was downhill from there. The Wild were able to get the game back after trailing 4-1 to one to 4-3, to three, thanks to uh, a couple of goals, including a goal by Freddie Goudreau, but the Stars finished the scoring after that. And uh, thank goodness the Wild won game one because uh, we now head to the XL Energy Center with this series tied up at 1-1. And hopefully the Wild are able to make some adjustments, get some players back healthy ahead of game three. For more on the Minnesota Wild, make sure you follow Locked on Wild wherever you listen to your podcasts. The Dallas Stars dominate game two against the Minnesota Wild behind a hat trick performance from Rope Hints. Hey, everybody, this is Dane Lewis with the Locked On Stars podcast. And the series between the Stars and the Wild is officially evened up at one apiece after the Stars came out and dominated this game offensively. Rope Hints gets things started with a shorthanded goal in the first period. He would go on to score two additional goals, one at even strength and one also on the power play, covering all his bases, but plenty of other players chipped in as well. Tyler Sagan, Jamie Benn, Evgeny Dodonov also gets two on the evening. An incredible game for the Stars, who needed to bounce back in a big way after not just losing the first game on home ice. They also lose Joe Pavelski to an injury. Hopefully we'll be getting him back sometime soon. And now the series heads to Minnesota, tied at one apiece. Minnesota, where Jake Ottinger is from, so you have to imagine he's already fired up to be playing in the postseason, and now he gets to do so in his home state with, I'm sure, plenty of friends and family in attendance. An exciting series to be certain. A lot of game misconducts handed out. These two teams are really starting to get the blood boiling on both sides of the ice, so it should be an intense next couple of games to see who can get the edge in this best-of-seven series. But we'll be covering this game in its entirety on Thursday's episode of Locked On Stars. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Edmonton avoided that dreaded 0-2 hole with a clutch performance in the third period. Locked On Oilers has all of the details from last night. It was almost the exact same story as Game 1 for the Edmonton Oilers against the LA Kings. But in Game 2, it's an unlikely hero for the Oilers getting their first win of the playoffs. Hi, my name is Brett Holden from Locked On Oilers. And the Oilers got to the start they wanted. Derek Ryan scoring the opening goal and Leon Dreisaitl getting his third goal of the playoffs. This one coming on the power play. But then the Oilers started to implode. Two goals in the second period, tied it up for the Kings, but it was none other than claim the dream, Costin winning the game for the Oilers in the third period, and then none other than Evander Kane would get the empty net goal, and fitting for Evander Kane to get this goal, sending the series back to Los Angeles as the last player to score a playoff goal in L.A., Evander Kane. Stuart Skinner stopping 23 at 25 fired at him and he only had to face three shots in the first period. However, he faced all 11 and stopped all 11 in the third period as the Edmonton Oilers tie up the series 1-1. Now, in the playoffs so far this year, 11-1 and is the record for the team who scores first in the playoffs. The one... The Edmonton Oilers from Game 1. Can the Edmonton Oilers get the first goal in Game 3 on Friday? We shall see with an 8 o'clock puck drop at Crypto.com Arena. That's a wrap for this edition of Locked On Game to Game NHL. Now that the Stanley Cup playoffs are here, make sure you are subscribed to Locked On NHL and your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.